Hey, what's happening everybody? You know, typically on this channel, we talk about some pretty complex things, but today I wanted to keep things simple and take us back to the basics. What happens when you have a brand new Play Audio 1U? How do you get it connected to your computer, route from your DAW to the interface, and then connect the interface to your soundboard? That's all we're gonna talk about today. That's all we're gonna cover. Let's get started. So first thing I wanna show you, I've got my interface racked up in a 2U rack here, and I've already got it powered up. So there's my power cable. Uh, one thing you wanna make sure of is make sure you have your power switch in the on position. So we've got this powered up, booted up, ready to go and now it's time to connect this to our computers. Now, you can maybe see on my uh, desk here, I've got two laptops. I'm gonna set this up as if, I'm, uh, as if I'm doing a redundant setup, though I'm gonna stop shy of showing how to set up automatic or manual redundancy. We'll do that in a separate video here later. But we've got this powered up, let's get it connected to our computer. So I've already, just for the sake of time, uh, got two USB-C cables connected to my computer. So let's start with computer A here. I'm gonna connect this to the USB doll A port, okay? That's connected to my computer. And then we're gonna take this other USB-C cable here, and that's gonna be connected to the B port, which is connected to our B computer. Now, let's jump over to our A computer here. This is Ableton Live. Uh, I'm gonna go into Preferences, Command Comma, go to the Audio tab, and I'm gonna choose the Play Audio 1U here in the list. Now, the great thing about the Play Audio 1U is it's a redundant audio interface. So both of these computers are gonna see it as if it's two different audio interfaces. Again, we'll talk about redundancy later, but for now, let's go to our B computer. Let's go to preferences. We're gonna do the same thing we did on our A computer here. Audio tab, and we're gonna to go to play audio on you. We're gonna pull that up. So again, here's my B computer, here's my A computer, exact same setup. Now, a couple of things I wanna point out here. Uh, first is if you on uh, in your DAW, you look at the sample right here and you see that you can't change that. What you're gonna want to do is download Oracle for X series. This is the free control software for my connectivity. Go to the audio tab here and you can choose and change your sample rate here in the bottom left-hand corner if you want to. Now you would wanna do that on both of your machines and computers. For me, 96K is perfectly fine, okay? Now next thing I'm gonna do is check my buffer size on both of my computers under the latency tab here. Again, your setup is gonna be different based on your DAW. I'm gonna set, uh, set computer A to 32 samples. I'm gonna set computer B to 32 samples as well. So I have essentially a identical setup for both. Now let's talk about setting up our outputs. So we'll go back to our A machine. And again, this is gonna be DAW specific, but under output config, I've enabled all of my outputs on my interface for computer A. That's gonna work really well for me. Now we'll go to computer B, output config. Oop, you can see I kind of fell behind here. I haven't enabled these. So I'm gonna enable these really quickly. Again, I'm essentially setting up both of these computers to have a completely identical setup. Whatever I do on one, I'm gonna do on the other, okay? So my audio interface is set up, that's computer B. Uh, my audio interface is set up over here on computer A, and now we're ready to do some routing. So I'm gonna just add a couple audio tracks here to my uh, Ableton set. And let's make sure we get uh, 12 audio tracks because we have 12 possible outputs on our interface. And so we're gonna delete these, let's do one more, that gets us to 12. Now I'm gonna route these to my interface. Now you may be using return tracks like what I typically do. You may be routing directly from audio tracks. However you do it, again, it's gonna be specific to your DAW. I just wanna show you how this shows up in your DAW. So in my case in Ableton, if I go down here to audio two and select external out, you can see I have output one and two there. I can go to external out here and let's choose three and four. Uh, audio two, external out, let's do five and six. This next one will be seven and eight, okay? And you can see I'm seeing all 12 outputs showing up here in my DAW. Now I'm gonna stop right here at 11 and 12 because I wanna use just stereo outputs instead of just mono outputs. So we'll delete these extra tracks here. We don't, we don't need the, uh, these for this example. Um, but I do wanna show you, if you look at this, you can see it's showing as if it has more outputs than 12. That's because we have these extra audio outputs for routing primarily uh, so that we can route to our test tone uh, and uh, have automatic failover. Again, that's outside of the scope of this video. We're keeping things really simple for this one. Um, so let's move over to our B machine because whatever we do on our A machine, we want an identical setup on our B machine. Now, uh, I'm going to delete these audio tracks here and we're gonna add a few more um, audio tracks to our set. So again, we can get to uh, six outputs to do the same exact setup on our B machine that we had on our A machine. So you can see my B machine sees this as a completely separate audio interface. 
uh, I'm going to route to the same outputs for each track. Uh, in fact, I would I would basically load the same exact Ableton Live set if I was doing this for a redundant setup. Uh, but you can see this is treated as if it's a separate audio interface, which is great. So there's computer B. There's our six tracks routed to our outputs. And here's computer A with our six tracks routed to our output. So at this point, um, audio is flowing from my DAW to my interface. Uh, I could actually see this on the front panel if I had some audio in there that I could um, uh, connect. I would see it metering on the front uh, panel there, which is really great, really helpful. How do we get out of our interface to our soundboard now? So I'm gonna flip my uh, Play Audio One U around in the rack here, and I wanna show you the back side of this so that we can take a look at what's available to us. Again, on the back side of our rack, we have 12 XLR outputs. There's a couple different ways we can get this connected to our soundboard. The first is if we just had a basic XLR cable. So let me grab my XLR cable here. Got one sitting next to me. And what I could do is I could plug one side of this into my interface. So we could say out one, would go into here. And then this other side of the cable, right, would not go into a direct box, which is kind of what we're used to if you've used an interface on stage before, but this can go directly into our soundboard. Now, if we're close enough to our soundboard, we could plug this into the back of it. If not, maybe you're plugging into a sub snake or what's called a stage snake. But the big thing I wanna stress here is that we can skip our direct box and go directly into our soundboard, which is nice. Now, if I'm gonna set up all 12 of my outputs like I routed, it's gonna take a lot of XLR cables. So what a lot of us do is instead of having 12 XLR cables, we'll use what's called an XLR loom. So let me grab that, I have that sitting next to me and show you what this looks like. Essentially what it is, is it's 12 XLR cables loomed together so that on one side, I have all of these that I can connect to the interface. And on the other side, I have these that can connect to my stage box or directly to my soundboard. So what you'll typically see on these is they're labeled. You can see different colors to show me kind of the group that each of these are in. Uh, and then they have numbers on them. So I can see the red group is kind of my first group here. And that's gonna help me plug this in really quickly. So we'll just do a few of these. So there's uh, output one, okay. Here's output two, output three, and then output four. And then again, what's cool about this is on the other side of the snake, I can look for um, this red group of cables, right? And then here's my outputs that correspond to what I just plugged in there. There's one, there's two, there's three, and there's four. So I can take this side of the snake, plug this in again, either to the soundboard, the sub snake or stage snake that's on stage, and that's gonna make its way back to the soundboard. So even though the Play Audio One U can do some really incredibly complex, cool things, it's still a fantastic, simple audio interface. And that's a look at how to set it up with your computer, do some basic audio routing, and then do routing out of your interface to your soundboard. Now, if you have any questions that we didn't cover in this video, make sure to click the link in the description of this so you can go check out our knowledge base, see all the great articles that the support team there has created. And if you can't find an answer to your question there, you could submit a ticket to contact our support team. Thanks so much for watching this video. We hope to see you on the next one. Take care, everyone.